Arbor Place Mall, and City TV are proud to present City Connector. On today's show, we'll talk to Fernando Bartolome of the 2010 Census, and from the city of Douglasville, Kimberly Weaver. And from Prom USA, we'll speak to Russell Roper. We'll speak with representatives from the American Red Cross. And our special musical guest today is Sunset Love Affair. And as always, your chance to be on TV with the interactive community calendar. Now, please welcome the stars of our show, Monk and Kelly. Well, thank you, and welcome to City TV. You know, I was I was listening to the band warming up before we actually started, and I have to tell you that I'm going to sing with the band today. I'm, I'm you doing, are? Oh, man, they're incredible. They're playing instrumentals. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, are they really? <laughs> yes. That would be kind of difficult. Yeah, it would be. Well, no, actually, they're going to be singing later. Today is going to be a bloody show. I hate to tell you this, but I mean, if uh, you... It's going to be blood relief. Oh, okay, all right. Right. I thought, uh, As opposed to comic relief, which you're attempting, but it's not I, working. It's not working at all. It never works like that. Plus, we're going to talk about proms, which is kind of nice, right? Prom season's right around the corner. Did you ever go to your prom? I decorated for my prom. I didn't go. You did not go to the prom? No. All right. Well, th this guy is going to make you jealous. Maybe you could be a chaperone at the prom. I'm looking forward All to right. that. Very good. Right. So anyway, we have joining us our first guest for today, who is Fernando Bartolome. Wow. Who's with the census. You did that well. He's the, the 2010 guy. census. I know. I've got a lot of questions for him, and he's only got 10 for us. So uh, yeah. How are you doing? We have doing questions. good. Good to see you. Do you have answers? Glad to be here. Yeah. Nice to see Take you. a seat. Please. I'm afraid of the questions that I might have to ask. <laughs> okay. You know, and, and that's the thing with the census that uh, we have found a lot of people get a little nervous about the census because they think that you're going to delve into their uh, information and then spread that and broadcast that like you're on a radio or television uh, show. Is that is, is that something to be worried about? It is the most people's concern, but our main co main concern is actually to keep their information confidential. Um, and you have a pretty good track record for that. Yeah, we have a perfect track record, 220 years without a breach of confidentiality. Uh, right now I can tell you that under current law, FBI or Secret Service, they don't have access to any of the census information. The government only can get some statistical information from the census, and any personal information can only be divulged after 72 years. So I think wow. uh, you will be confident that that'll be okay at that time. Well, and a lot of people have been hearing about census, but just explain what what a census is, so people understand exactly what it is that you're you're doing. The census is the process of the government to count every person living in the United States on its territories every 10 years. Um, they just want to make sure that they have a perfect count of everybody that lives here. Yeah. What's the hardest question on the... It's like a test, right? Well, actually, you have to you've take got a 10 test? questions. What's, yeah. Why don't we just I go? can show you the, a copy of the questionnaire. Ah, okay, so is it easy to fill out? Easy to fill out. It's only 10 questions. Uh, pretty much how many people live in the household. Um, who's staying there? The main question is actually who is going to be living there on April 1st, 2010? Right. Who's who's in the household? If you live somewhere else, that's the day we want to count you there. Okay. Right. If you uh, are in college in April, that's where you have to fill it up. Um, what's your telephone number? Okay. Your race? Yeah. If you're of the Hispanic or Latino descent or origin, and uh, sex and your telephone number. Mm -hmm. So simple questions, they don't really not invasive questions at all. They used to be a longer questionnaire, now that's done by uh, another... Uh, another uh, organization? Yes, another organization, it's part of the census, but throughout the year, and you might get one or you might never get one, but right now what we want to know is who's living here so we can allocate all these resources that are available for each will, community. Will every household receive one of those in the mail? Uh, yes. Most uh, most people in our area are going to get one uh, in the mail. Some people will get it by hand in some rural areas. But um, between March 15 and the 17th, you should be expecting that to come in your mail. It has uh, a pre-stamp envelope so you can send it back. Just fill it up and send it back. That way we don't have to go visit you okay. to help you fill it up later on. Now, what, what if I don't get one for some reason? If you don't get one, we're going to have all over the area, right here. My office covers six counties, um, Fayette, Carroll, Heard, Coweta, South Fulton, and Douglas. We have 39 questionnaire assistance centers where you're gonna see our little sign saying census, we will help you. And we have uh, copies of the questionnaires. You can come and fill it up and um, 
everybody should be able to get so one. what if what if you get this at home and then you don't understand it for instance and you say well you know and it's really not that difficult uh, but what if you have questions on how to fill it out is there a place you can call or is there there's a number that you can okay. call is 1-800-923-8282 or you can go to a website is 210census.gov and it has a lot of information. Okay, so say for instance I'm like I'm looking at this, I don't mail it in, and then somebody comes to, you know, the house and says, you know, hey Mr. Monk, we noticed that you didn't fill out your census. Uh, was there a problem with it? And I say, no, I just didn't want to fill out the information. What would you tell me? Why would it be important for me to fill this out? Well, we we're going to tell you that it's very important for you and your community to fill it out because a lot of funds are at stake. Well, the census is important for two things, power and money. Right. Money because there is uh, $400 billion that need to be divided equally, hopefully, uh, throughout all the states and uh, territories. And um, the other is the rep representation. Uh, 435 seats that we need to uh, divide throughout our nation. Actually, this year, if we get the numbers that they're expecting in Georgia, Georgia might gain a seat of representation, and that will be great. Okay. Not so only that. Um, that's important for representation. I mean, you know, then you get but it, a, a But it's voice also from. important for federal dollars. I wanted to add that for each person that don't feel it, we don't get information, maybe $13,000. Per person. Per person could be lost in 10 years. Wow. So if 10 people didn't fill out, obviously there's $130,000. And, and you could just do the math from there. Direct money to your community that yeah. you're losing. We are paying our taxes, and we should get the sh fair share back sure. to our well, community. I, I want to talk about the ease of it because it really is an easy thing. It's not very difficult to, mm -hmm. to fill out. It's both in English and Spanish, mm -hmm. so uh, you cover different languages. What if somebody doesn't speak English or Spanish? How do they get help when? Um, you will you will see all our new community. All our new community. We have 79 B counted sites where you will find the questionnaire in the most popular languages that we have, and we have also the 800 number that you can call and get the questionnaire in the language you want it. It's easy, it's fast, and it's important. Now, say you're in a position where you may be moving, you're not sure, what do you do? I mean, if you're, if you're a tran if transient. You, if you think you're moving, what we want you to do is the, the place where you're gonna be living on April 1st, 2010, that's where you want, I want you to say, this is where. Okay. And for homeless folks or, or folks that, that are displaced and displaced, they you uh, don't have a home at that we, point? We have a few operations that account for that. We visit those uh, places like soup kitchens and, and homeless parks and places like that. We are working diligently to find those places so we can count them and uh, make sure that everybody's counted. I want to make it clear uh, to folks who are looking at this and they think, well, you know, I may not want to, I may not want to fill us out, or if somebody comes, I may not want to answer questions. Uh, you said that it's not going to be invasive. You're not going to ask questions like, I mean, say for instance, uh, there, there are people who are not United States citizens right. yet. That will not be an issue. It's not an issue. All we want to know is who's living here, so we can know where the money needs to go for the community because no matter what, if you're here, you need to be counted. So you're not you're not the INS, you're not a government organization, it's the census separate from everything else, has nothing to do with, you know, people are gonna knock on your door and bother you. That's a question that always came up, comes up, everybody thinks about it. Sure. It's completely confidential. Us as employees are sworn for life. Um, there's very strict penalties for any kind of uh, mm -hmm personal information that we can say, so uh, five year, up to five years in jail. Not only that, the information stays only statistical for 72 years. And uh, We're not going to be around. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we have what we call tracks and blocks, right. and the information normally goes out in tracks, so they cannot even pinpoint the property where the information comes out. So it's 40,000 people in tracks. So. Excellent information. It's real easy to fill out. Uh, and if you don't fill it out and you have questions, you have the answers and you have a lot of people that are willing to help. Yeah, we encourage everybody to get it, mail it back. It's easy, it's fast, it's safe, it's so important. They need to fill it up. Fernando, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it, man.
All right. Great to be here. That's an excellent explanation. The census is not out to get you. They just want to know the information. And really, there's a lot of money that could come to your community. It's very important. Thank you. Uh, In just a couple of minutes, we'll come back with some more guests. Right now, we have our interactive community calendar that you can come down to Arbor Place Mall and be a part of uh, City Connector. That's Kelly and Janice. Hello, Janice. Hi. How are you today? Doing great. This is our month, our March edition of City Connector. A lot of things happening. Got a lot of guests lined up for the interactive community calendar. Do we not? Yes, we do. And our very first guest is Dixie Boyd with Gift of Love. Come on in, Dixie. Nice to have you with us today. Tell us, tell us about Gift of Love, if you would. This organization was started by Juanita Clay 14 years ago. The names of the children that we serve are given to us to the school counselors. Most of you know us for the work we do at Christmas by providing Christmas for families and by the backpack program where we give them school supplies and clothes when they get ready to go back to school. But for the last two years, she has also provided food for children on the weekend. There are hundreds of children in this community who go home after school on uh, Friday and do not eat again until they come back Monday morning. Every week we give them a backpack filled with uh, food that they can use during this time. Right now we have a uh, program going on because spring break comes up in just a few weeks. They will be out of school for nine days and we are trying to provide food for them to have during that time. So right now our biggest needs are peanut butter, cans of tuna, macaroni and cheese, things like that that children like and will eat. All right, so if, uh, if, if I'm hearing this correctly, when I go to the grocery store, hopefully maybe even tonight, pick up an extra jar of peanut butter, extra jar of tuna. What do I need to do with that? You can bring it to uh, a gift of love, and we're located on Longview Drive next to the skating rink. I also want to stress that these names come from the school system and that every money and every bit of food that you give goes to children. There are no salaries involved in this ministry. Wow. And Kelly, I'd like to mention as a business how I sure. got involved. I was asked just to give money, and then they have volunteers such as Dixie that mm-hmm. goes out. And um, when Dixie came by to see me, her need was 100 boxes of cereal. So if you're listening and you're a business and you don't have time to go out and shop, you know, mm-hmm. they would be glad to have um money donations and they'll do the shopping for you and i am a wonderful shopper are you yes, okay I am. so you'll stretch that uh donation uh, i just spent a hundred dollars and i got eight hundred and sixty seven dollars worth of clothes for that hundred dollars so it can be done all right well dixie thank you for that great ministry here in the area that great outreach and we want to encourage our listeners to be part of that That's make a, a donation of those items is there a website or a phone number that we can um Yes, there is, but there don't ask me anything about a website. Tell you oh, what. Here, there it is. You All right. can read it. It's uh, www.agiftoflove.org, and we'll have that information across the screen when we uh, have the program up okay. and running. Thank there you, Dixie. Thank you very much. Keep nice up the to good meet work. you. Thank you. Yay. That's a great program. Great on. program. I'm going to pick up an extra jar, too, of peanut butter today. That's good. Who do we have up next? Our next guest is Jamie Fritter. She's here to share with us some great events that's coming up in the city of Douglasville. And Jamie, you're no stranger to us, are you? No, I'm not. I've been on TV several times. All right. <laughs> Tell us what you've got going on. Well, right now, um, through the Douglasville Convention and Visitors Bureau, where I work, we're doing the Douglasville's Got Talent auditions um, with the Main Street program, and the, they will run on May 1st. But right now, we're just doing call for auditions. Um, they just need to contact me by going to our website at Visit Douglasville. Com, and then, or just give me a call on my phone number, um, which is 678-715-6068, and I'll just sign you up. You'll come out and audition in April, and then we'll do, do callbacks for the finalists. All right. So anyone with any sort of talent, or is there any limitations? Any sort of talent. So we're looking for jugglers, anyone's, no flamethrowers, but, um, you know, <laughs> bands, um, um, singers, dancers, any of that. Any of that. Mm-hmm. Wow. That That's sounds good. interesting. It is. Hopefully. Last year it was really good. Do you know, can you remember how many you had last year? Last year we had 24 compete. We had a children's and an adult's category. Right. And that, that was full. It was all day on the uh, plaza there. It was full activity. Um, yes. It ran from one to three, and then the announcements um, will be um, of the winners will be right after that. And so once again, this year you'll be dividing those into segments. The adults will compete and the children will compete. Yeah, we'll do um, a children's category and an adult category, and then we'll hand out first, second, and third place to both of them. 
All right. Well, that information yeah. is available on the screen where they can get in touch. Mm -hmm. Auditions the month of April. The month of April. Mm -hmm. And the event is actually March the, uh, May, the first, May, 1st. May the 1st. May the 1st. All right. All right. Jamie, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. I don't sing, I don't dance, but I'll be there with the camera. How about that? Uh, uh, that's, that's your talent. That's, my, that's my talent. And okay. I don't know what I can contribute. You, you'll be there smiling <laughs> with us in the crowds, won't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Who else do we have today? Well, our next guest is Amy Davison, and she's with the Cultural Arts Center. Hey, now, Amy. The I just met you at the uh, Chamber Luncheon yeah, last week. Right. Yeah, very I good. And Amy, you're with the... I'm from the Cultural Arts Council. I'm the new um, program manager there, program assistant, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so I'm here to talk about what we have coming up in the much of, month of March. Um, first up, the month of March is our Youth Art Month, and so we have our exhibition that features all the students' work from here around Douglas County and all the schools. And that'll be on view through March 26th, so we've got a lot of great things going on there. Um, on March 6th, coming up is our Cowboy Poets Gathering, and it's an annual thing that we do. This year it's going to be at Chapel Hill High School, so that's a little change. Um, and you can purchase tickets and make reservations at our website for that, or you can give us a call. And then on March 13th, we have one of our Kenna Classic Chamber Concerts. We've already had one this past weekend that was a real great success, but this next one is the Poulenc String Quartet, and they'll be doing some pieces by Mozart. And that'll be really nice. Um, after that is our Mad Hatter's Tea Party, and it's on March 20th. And that's for the younger kids from ages about 3 to 10. And it's a whole lot of fun uh, where they kind of explore the Lewis Carroll's version of Alice in Wonderland. And that'll be really, really fun. But reservations are required for this event. So you have to go online and either pay there or give us a call and sign up. Sign up so it should that. be a whole lot of fun. Have you participated in the Mad Hatter before? No, this is my first year. This is your first yeah, year. Okay. But everybody's really excited. <laughs> excited. And you, Janice, have you, have you been part of one of those before? No, no, but you have this not. Okay. year I plan on bringing my grandson, so oh, I better get registered and reserve his spot. Okay, please Very do. good. Mm -hmm. Well, it's nice to meet you. Nice Thank you for bringing all that information Thank for you. us. Yeah. Janice, we got a busy community. Yes, we do. Isn't it great to live in a community where so many people give back? They do, and have a lot to offer uh, our citizens things to do and places to go. Right now, though, I think we have more information on the City Connector with Monk and Kelly. There's the census already. See that? In that <laughs> time that they took to do the community calendar? Done. You had it done. You had it done, done. like within two Easy. minutes. Not Easy. Even. As a Not matter of fact. All right, now this segment, I, I, I'm going to admit to you, I'm going to get a, I get a little nervous because, you know, when I go to the doctor and stuff like that, if they even put the blood pressure thing on me, I'm like, oh. Yeah, well, you don't need to be nervous with these folks. Are we, you sure? we have joining us, we have April Phillips, who is with the Blood Services Division of the American Red Cross. She's the director there. And Reuben Brown, who is with the Chapter Relief Division. And yes. you guys you guys don't look scary. I mean, you know, because no, usually when you think about giving blood, uh, in all honesty, you know, I have to look the other way. When I was in the service for six years, it's like anytime they did that, I'd be like, Oh, please, please, just don't show them. And they're like, Mr. Mom, it's come easy. on. It doesn't, it doesn't take long, does it? No, actually, the entire process typically only takes about 10 minutes to give blood. From the time you walk in the door to the time you're eating your Nutter Butters and juice. Oh, I'm there. And it can't give you the cookie. All right, that's yes, great. you still get the Nutter Butters that's or other That's an upgrade, cookies. you know. It's a maximum of an hour. Is it? So in just an yeah. hour, six times a year, you can help save up to 18 lives just That's with that incredible. time. That's, right. That's incredible. Now, they used to have the cheesy little, uh, not the cheesy little, but they didn't have cheese on it, but it was like the little sugar cookies. When, yeah. when I give blood, they're up to Nutter Butters We're up now? to Nutter Butters. That's we take right. Nutter Butters and Peanut Butter seriously in yeah. Georgia, That's so right. we know well, to keep it on hand. You get the protein back and everything like well, that? Well, unless you're allergic to peanuts, but I'm sure you've got yes, something we have a, Yes, we have other options. We have raisins, cheeses, whatever yeah. you, you yeah. like. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. You could, like, have a meal there, couldn't you? No. I no, <laughs> would recommend it, but... <laughs> So what, is there a particular type of blood that, that you need this time of year? Yes, right now we have an urgent need for type O blood donors and type B blood donors. Type O is a universal blood type, so it can be given to any patient during an emergency when there's no time to determine their blood type. Uh, we also have an urgent need right now for platelets. Platelets are the clotting factor in blood and are often given to cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Um, due to the recent weather we've had in the Northeast and even right here in Georgia, platelet donations are down. And because we never collect enough blood or platelets in the state of Georgia to meet the needs of the more than 120 hospitals that we serve, 
we have to rely on those other states to meet our blood needs. So when they're impacted, we feel mm -hmm. the impact as well. So how does somebody donate if they want to? Well, if you're interested in donating, you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS or go to our website at redcrossblood.org. We have seven blood donation centers throughout the metro Atlanta area, and we have blood drives all the time. In fact, next month there are two blood drives coming up. Uh, right here in Douglasville. And do you take volunteers, folks that might want to hold somebody's hand if they're scared? Absolutely. You know, if you're not able to donate blood, which 38% of the population is eligible to give, but that leaves a, a good figure who would like to help out still. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not eligible to give, you can also volunteer your time at a blood drive in the canteen or registration area, or help set up a blood drive in your community. And again, you can get more information on our website at redcrossblood.org. And those community sponsor groups are are crucial to our blood supply. That's right. It's been extremely busy, obviously, Ruben, and you deal with uh, more of the emergency side of things and, uh, you know, the disaster, and uh, specifically with Haiti, I'm sure that you've been yes. extremely busy. Very right busy, now. very busy. Well, in Haiti specifically, the Red Cross was on the ground immediately after the earthquake struck. We all know that on January 12th, a 7.3 magnitude earthquake uh, struck Haiti, killing some 200,000 people and rendering 1.2 million people immediately homeless. Mm -hmm. The Red Cross was on the ground providing food, shelter, uh, emotional support, uh, water, tarps, uh, whatever people needed. And uh, we think that the Red Cross is going to be there for some time to come. Mm -hmm. uh, what it took for the earthquake to destroy in a matter of moments is probably going to take months, if not years, mm -hmm. to correct. Sure. And so the Red Cross volunteers are on the ground now, 600 strong. Uh, we also have uh, 30 uh, disaster specialists from the United States providing uh, for telecommunications needs, uh, helping with uh, emergency distribution needs. We have 14 employees here from the United States who are also helping out, and 50 Creole tr uh, translators mm -hmm. who are on board the USNS Comfort, which is a ship a station right off the uh, coast of Haiti, uh, helping some of the Haitian patients uh, as they try to get themselves back on the road to recovery. And, and here in the Douglasville uh, area, Douglas County, you know, obviously with the flooding problems that we've had recently too. I mean, I'm. It was. It's just one thing after another. And you know, you hear this all the time, but the best thing you can do is just don't donate money mm -hmm. to Absolutely. the American Red Cross. Absolutely. Well, think about think about it this way. Uh, one of the things that we tell people is that if you donate material donations like blankets and so forth. Uh, it costs money to inventory those items. Sure. Yes. It costs money to clean those items. It costs money to ship those items. So the Red Cross would much rather take the monetary donation, convert it immediately into what our clients need, whether it be clean water, uh, medications, infant formula, whatever they need, you can take that money and convert it immediately to what they, they sure. need. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you guys are just ready to go at a moment's notice. And Absolutely. So uh, you've got all the infrastructure in place. It just makes sense to do that. And sometimes we think, you know, since Haiti happened a while back, I sure. mean, you know, it's like, okay, maybe there's not much of an immediate need. Right. And what do you tell somebody when that... Well, there's going to be a long-term need. Yeah. Uh, Red Cross, along with other agencies, are taking care of those emergency needs. But again, uh, what it took uh, Mother Nature a few moments to destroy is going to take months, if not years, to, to fix. And so Red Cross is going to be there for the long term, helping with things like malnutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, you may not know that Haiti has the highest infant uh, and maternal mortality rate in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, Haiti also has a big problem with malaria, which can be fatal. Uh, it's in a temperate area, very hot down there, a lot of mosquitoes down there, and uh, something that might not be that bad here in the United States can be life-threatening in Haiti. And so there are other issues like HIV AIDS uh, that the Haitians dealt with before the earthquake and are going to have to deal with after the earthquake. And the Red Cross is going to be there with them every step of the way helping them to deal with those situations. Are you still looking for manpower for, and volunteers? Uh, well, we're looking for specially trained volunteers. At this point, people can speak fluent French, uh, as you know or may not know. Uh, Creole and French are the languages of choice in Haiti. So if you're fluent in those areas, then we want you to, to volunteer right now. But in the long term, the Red Cross will probably have need of people to go down, help with relief distribution, among other things. Well, thank you very much, April. Appreciate your coming. And Ruben, thank you very much for the outstanding work that you do on an ongoing basis. We thank really appreciate that. Thank Thanks. you. Hey, we're going to take a little break. We're going to come back with the band that was warming up a little bit earlier. Man, I hope they do the Edwin McCain song that they were that singing was, a little bit earlier. That was pretty awesome. That was very awesome. We have Sunset Lovers here. We have Sunset Lovers here. Yeah. Yeah.
back to City Connector. We're Monk and Kelly, and the man behind. I want you to watch out for the guy who doesn't have the beard, because uh, he doesn't say much. Okay? Yeah, he worries say. me. He worries me. No, they're fantastic. They are sunset mother bears. Yeah, and we're gonna ask him about the name a little bit later. On. Please welcome to City Connector. Connector, Ramon and Kelly, and we have a very special guest with us, uh, and he's going to talk about prom from Prom USA. It's Russell Roper, Mr. Roper. It's a pleasure to meet you. I watched you on TV back in no, the seventies and eighties. Mr. Was Roper, it? no, uh, different Roper. Different, yeah, different, yeah. different Roper. Roper. Okay, all right. Yeah, he's our prom specialist. Though. Yeah. And actually, you've been working with Becca's Closet. As a matter of fact, I got a really nice letter from Becca's Closet with, that was addressed to you saying thank you so much for helping promote our organization with the economic situation across the country and the huge loss so many in the Douglasville area suffered with the recent floods. 
We hope that our organization can provide students in financial need with the prom of their dreams. We extend a special thank you to Douglasville's own Prom USA. It's been so generous to us for so many years. They've made hundreds of girls happy with their donation of beautiful gowns. We That's appreciate awesome. That. Yes, That's thank you. fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Now, and, and here's something, I mean, I, I guess as a parent, and we've got uh, a teenager and a preteen, so we're going to be going through that prom season, and the one thing that I'm going to worry about is, are my kids going to be safe when it comes to prom? And I know you guys are really concerned about safety every year. And you've worked with committees prom. on that. And one of the things you can do is, um, when the kids are ready to go to the prom, is either hire a limousine, get a driver, rent a bus, uh, take them yourself. Yeah, they'd really like they'd that. Really like well, that. Russell, there. Oh, okay, so you get maybe a big brother, big sister to do the carpool for you or something like no, that. No, actually, you know what? I like that idea of driving the kids to the prom yourself because you can say, look, I'll let you, if you come home at the time that we agree upon, I won't drive you to the prom or pick you up from the prom. A lot of leverage. <laughs> yes, I think so. I think we're on to something yeah. here. Yeah, but you have to go for more than one year because, you know, they all bets would be off the second yeah. year. Now, say for instance, someone, you know, obviously, you know, limos are a little expensive. I mean, I know groups of kids get together and that's kind of a good way to cut down on the expense for that. I mean, um, have you ever heard of people just renting out just the driver, you know, since they don't want mom and dad to, to drive? Oh, absolutely. And we, uh, my wife and I have done that before. Really? Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you have like a, you know, like taxi cab confessions on TV, like one of those little no, cameras in there? don't keep any cameras no. running. Yeah. No cash cab, you don't, guys don't play games in the no. car? All right. Now, you were involved with Becca's Closet. Tell us how you got into that. Uh, we have always uh, thought of the verse in Luke, given it shall be given. Uh, we like to give back. We were doing a prom expo at McEachern High School uh, about four years ago, and Becca's Closet was there. Uh, so we looked into it, thought it was a good organization for us to hook up with, and have uh, given them probably over 500 gowns in the last four years. Wow. Very cool. How many kids, I, and I, I'm just, a, I, I imagine that you must be doing a pretty good business with pr proms come up once a year, so that's that's your bread and butter, but how, how many kids would you say you serve uh, each in year in the Douglasville area? Where in the are? Douglasville area, we probably serve around 500 kids. Really? Yes. That's awesome. Do they ever come back to you and, and tell you about some of the prom stories? They come back and we give them incentives to come back. We give really? them a repeat customer discount so they yeah. come back and enjoy that. Yeah, that's nice. It would be nice to know that, you know, they have such a special memory and, and they get to share share that with you. Uh, they send us pictures. We post those on our website and on our Facebook. And, yeah. That's sweet. Okay. have quite a number of those. Popular gowns this year. What's what's in style? Uh, prints. Uh, uh, geometric patterns, uh, bow colors. Oh, okay. Those are very popular. So, the, like the jewel tones, that kind of thing. Is that what we're talking yes, about? Yes, absolutely. Like for, plug in yeah. magenta or absolutely. something. Absolutely. What like about the guys? Them. The guys, do they, are they going a little bit more classic this year, or are they? The guys want to match the girls. Okay, yes. so they just have to find out what their date's wearing, and yes, that's and, all. And it, it's the best thing they can do <laughs> is match their date. Okay. That's right, yes. exactly. I like that. Exactly. So, so as a parent, now you, have you had your kids go through the prom experience? I've had three daughters that have graduated. They all went through, and I have uh, two sons. One is, uh, this is his second year doing So the best advice you'd give your, your child as they're heading out the door? Be home by 12. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Russell Roper from Prom USA. Thanks. Thank you so Appreciate much for it, joining us. Thank and you. thank you for your work with Becca's Closet. Where is Becca's Closet, by the way? Uh, Becca's Closet is operated out of McKeithman High School. They have a location in Cherokee. Uh, in Kennesaw this year, uh, and you can find more information at www.promusa.biz, and all the information is on our website and linked to it. Excellent, Thank you, From USA. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Russell. Thank Roper. you. Our interactive calendar is hot and heavy this month, and we're going to check in with Kelly and Janice. Welcome back to another segment of Community Calendar. We're glad that you're with us today, and we have some more wonderful guests in our. First guest up is Valerie Howell from Junior League, and she'll be talking about the 5K race. Come on in, Valerie. Hi. How are you today? Good. How are you? Good. I am here promoting our 5K race, which will be March the 27th at um, Clinton Nature Park. Uh, we are also having a one-mile fun run for the kids, 12 years and under, and then we are asking all adults to come out and run or walk. 
um, is $20 per pre-registration for adults and only $12 per kid. We're also donating $2 back to each child who registers to their school. So that kind of helps out there as well. Um, of course, there will be t-shirts given to those who participate, um, different awards for each categories, for age groups, for the kids and for the adults. Um, and we're also, of course, always be, um, seeking sponsorships. Okay. to help us with this. And your t-shirt, uh, your name would be on the back of the t-shirt as well as all of our signage. This is one of our biggest fundraisers for the year to help promote a lot of the um, projects that we do within the community. Okay. And what is the location of that run? It is at Clinton Nature Park, again on Saturday, March the 27th, starting at 11.30 for the one mile fun run and 12 o'clock for the 5k run and all the money that raised will go back to the community to help different projects that junior league does absolutely something like we do book brigade where we give kids books um, all third graders to promote literacy we also work with head start in the senior center and so all the money that we raise goes directly back into helping the community and they're a busy group. We were with, um, uh, I guess it was Heather Goranovich yesterday and some, uh, I guess, the Million Minute Read you have going on right now, too. So the Junior League is definitely a busy organization. I'm sure membership. Uh, do you have a membership sponsorship or a program with that? Absolutely. We're always seeking new members. Um, ladies, 23 and older, we welcome you to come join us. We meet actually every second Monday of the month at the Douglas Hill Conference Center, and we would just invite anybody to come out and just check us out and see what we're all about. Sounds like they're all about giving back to the community. Absolutely. All right. Wonderful Valerie, organization. Thank you. thank you very much. Great for having you with us today. Valerie and I go back a few years. We went to school together. I always like to say that. She also uh, owns Merle Norman there on uh, Chapel Hill. Great lady, great business. Absolutely. Who else do we have up? Our next guest is John Gray. He's Mr. here John. from Chamber of Commerce. Hi, John. How are Hi. you today? Good. How about you, ladies? Good. What do, what do you have going on for us? Lots of activity. I'm we sure. have our Douglas County Chamber of Commerce Business to Community Expo that will be Saturday, April 17th, right here at Arbor Place Mall. Uh, it's presented by West Georgia Technical College and a great opportunity to come out and see several of the local businesses in the area. We've got a lot of great businesses right here in Douglasville. So no need to go out of the county. No need to go anywhere else. Stay here by local. Uh, we've got the... Uh, Obviously, all the great businesses here at the mall, but we'll have an extra 60 or 70 businesses, some home-based and some with re other retail locations right here in Douglas County on that day. Right. And the, uh, the mall expos that you guys do here, they're fun. What are some of the highlights that you have uh, going on? I know one year you had a concert out in the parking lot, um, several different things. What about this year? Uh, we've got a lot of the individual things this year. You'll, you'll find a lot of fun things at the individual booths. You'll find a lot of contests, a way to come around and win some great prizes. Um, and actually, none of our booths sell anything, so you can actually come to the mall and not buy anything. I don't know why you would, but if you, if you need that excuse to get out of the house, then you can say, hey, I'm going to the mall and I'm not going to buy anything. I'm just going to see the Chamber Expo. All right. And if I'm a business and uh, not currently a member of the Chamber of Commerce, may I participate? Yes, you can. Uh, there is a, a little bit of an extra fee if you're not a business uh, member of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, but our booths do start at $250 for our chamber members, and then they go up to $700, and then we have some sponsorship opportunities for $1,500 and then $3,000 uh, for the silver and gold level sponsors. Great way, though, to showcase your product, your product line, your uh, services, and everything that you offer if you're a business in the area. Absolutely. And right. If you'd like information on any of the businesses that are involved with the Chamber, our website is uh, douglascountygeorgia.com. We've got an alphabetical and a category listing there, so if you're looking for any businesses or services in the area, please check us out. All right. Thank you, John. Thank it's always you. a pleasure to have somebody from the Chamber. Uh, with all the activities that they do. They keep us busy, don't they? Absolutely. They have lots of How would you like that radio voice he has? Can I, you tell he had a background in radio? Absolutely. Who do we have up next? Well, our next guest is Mike Mettler, and he is with the city of Douglasville, and he's going to talk to us about some projects that steer into your heart. Well, I, Mike. well I'm happy to be back, uh, yes. and I want to let you know that uh, Building Safety Week is coming up pretty soon, but... Here in Douglasville, building safety is an everyday event. Um, we are experiencing a, a prob uh, probably a, a tragic trend here. 
And this is what I'm here to talk about. Uh, the events uh, that have transpired over the past several months and the number of projects that have been launched uh, in our community that have not had the benefit of a permit. Now, our department is uh, here solely for building and life safety. And we're here to ensure that building codes are met. And here is where citizens of this community can help us. We have, uh, over the past two and a half years, uh, the state has required all contractors to be licensed. And we have a lot of people that are out there posing as contractors that are not licensed. Now, these folks will give you a real good deal because they don't have the overhead that a lot of the other contractors have, like insurance and training and manpower and equipment that is required uh, by the state. And those people will obviously tell you that you don't need a permit uh, to do a project because they'll be ferreted out by us. Uh, because we do check licenses. And our purpose uh, here is to make sure that the homeowners, especially on projects that they have gotten involved with, and those could be anywhere from making an addition or finishing out the basement in their house. Uh, all these projects do require permits, and they uh, have certain building codes that have to apply. And that's our job, is to make sure that those codes are adhered to. Not all the builders know what the codes are, and that's what our job is to make sure that that happens. All right. So if you've got a project going on, uh, if you're not clear whether you need a permit, you should just contact the city of Douglasville and you have someone there that can make them aware. If By all means, uh, call uh, City Hall, the uh, number is 770-920-3000, and just tell the receptionist that you want us to talk to the uh, building department, and uh, the call will come to me. And it doesn't matter whether you have a project already uh, underway and uh, you're concerned whether it uh, needs to be permitted. We'll, we'll stop your project and get you on track. And it's all about safety. It's all about doing it correctly, keeping the uh, homeowners, those building projects safe for everyone. You bet. All right. Okay. Mike, thank you so much. Thank we'll, you. We'll have that information uh, on the screen for people to get in touch with. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mike. All right. Um, lots of things going on in the city of Douglasville. and lots of good information that the consumer out there might not know. That's right. And I tell you what, we have uh, got another guest lined up with Monk and Kelly, I think, talking about some more activities happening in Douglasville. You're absolutely right about all the events that are going on <laughs> in the Douglas County area. We're ready to spring into spring. We're ready to do that with the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and Kimberly Weaver joins us. This morning, this afternoon, this evening, she's here around the clock. You really do work around the clock on everything, don't you? We do. Um, we are a busy city. Actually, we have great community support for what we do, and so we're able to host a lot of events for our community free or at a very nominal charge. Um, we want people to come out and enjoy and just be a happy happy family. So. Yeah. You know we talked to the Prom USA uh, uh, guy. Mr. Roper came yeah. over here. Russell came here and talked about prom and everything like that. And I have a feeling that we're starting to move into another uh, wedding type season? Yes, we are. We're hitting a big wedding season and actually our downtown convention center, we host a lot of weddings outside on the plaza and also in our conference center. Um, we also have other facilities that we want to showcase. So this year we're going to have some outside venues, which is like Le Jardin Blanc, our cultural arts center, and O'Neill Plaza. Um, we're going to have vendors out there starting April 18th is our first show. It's from 2 to 5 and it's free, so you can't really get any better than that. Free information, it promotes our local businesses and we, we just want people to come out there and enjoy it and hopefully take some of the stress out of their wedding day. Now is it too late for a local business to get involved with this? It is not. Um, if we have space available for them, we will take them for our April 18th show. If not, we will let them know about our upcoming shows and they can apply for those. And what are some of the things that will be highlighted at? this particular show? We're going to highlight the venue of Le Jardin Blanc. They can do um, some indoor, they have an indoor facility and they also have outside facility. They have okay. a garden and a big tent. Right. Um, they were actually on a national show um, for weddings. So they actually have national exposure. So it's kind of a, a little famous spot in Douglasville. Um, we have photographers that are local. We have bakers that are local. Anything to deal with it, deal with weddings that are there. Um, we were going to have a fashion show as well. So mm -hmm. you'll be able to see what 
Douglasville has to offer. And it's a, it, the first time we had it was last year, and I was actually amazed. I was like, wow, you know, I didn't even know all this existed around here. <laughs> so it, it's very educational for everyone, and it promotes our local businesses. They need to have like a like like they have on Ace of Cakes. They have to have like a cake off or. We would love to do well, something be, like that. That'd be so kind of cool. Any chefs that want to do something, <laughs> maybe we can build that up one time. That you know, would be awesome. it might Bakers, be something we can do. That's right. That feel so inspired. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That'd be great. I don't know. I think that probably was the biggest. I, that that was my biggest concern for our when we got married our wedding was the cake mm -hmm. you know the biggest concern for my best man was like is he going to show up to the wedding on time <laughs> and that's it but yeah not that, that we have any problems with being tardy but no absolutely no absolutely not for the i mean you know the wedding dress was no concern for her because she just went, you know, did the bargain basement thing and pushed a bunch of women down and got the one that she wanted. I didn't. You my did. mother did. The fact that she was over six feet tall probably helped. probably helped a little bit, and, yeah. Intimidating. But you can really find, uh, you know, what fashions are in style mm -hmm. and, um, you know, some great bargains. And it's nice that you focus on everybody that's local. Yeah, we, we really try to promote our local business because without those businesses, we wouldn't be able to have the community that we have. So, you know, we want to give back to them as well. I mean, it's not just our citizens we're giving back to, we're giving back to our businesses. We're all together in this, so we want to help them out. What other events are coming up in spring? Um, in May is the, probably our busiest month. We have our Main Street Community um, Market is May 1st, and that's also when we have our talent show that's coming out. Um, if anyone wants to be a participate in that, they can go to our event schedule on www.visitdouglasville.com and there's a form they can fill out. Is that dancing? What's that? Is that the it's anything. Um, we do, as long as it's not hazardous. You know, no fires, <laughs> no no animals jumping. You know, we don't want to have we don't now. have any liability there. Yeah, right, but right, right. <laughs> but it's it's local and we do have the age groups from adult to children and we try to be fair in our judging and we do first through third place. So you do get a trophy. Last year we did it and everybody enjoyed it. So we really yeah, want to cool. do that again and then we have our taste of Douglasville weekend where we have a wine tasting on a Friday night it's the 14th of May and then we have the taste of Douglasville the following day and that's done through our cultural arts center um, we have a free movie night on the plaza May 28th and because it's the day that the children are getting out of school we're going to show a children's movie so we hope the families bring them out it's free can't get that's much better than part. that yeah, and then absolutely. we have our hydrangea show which is June 4th through the 6th and the flower show that we have going on there actually won a national award so that's something that we like to brag about and um, we've only been having the show for three years and it's actually won a national award which some places never win those. Yeah, so. yeah. All right, before we let you go, I want you to give everybody a website they can go to so they can see all the schedule of events that are going on with Convention and Visitors Bureau. The Convention and Visitors Bureau website is www.visitdouglasville.com. And you go to the events page and everything's listed there. If there's something you want to talk about or you want to inquire about, you click on my name and just send it to me and I'll contact you. And your name is YPC, right? Is that <laughs> no, it's not. I'm kidding. That was another event that you guys were involved with. Yes, it was. It was. Uh, well, thank you very much, Kimberly. Appreciate it. We have our interactive calendar. And Janice and Kelly are standing by with a bunch of folks with some great activities here in the Douglas area. And we'd like to welcome you back to another segment of our community calendar, and I'm very delighted to have someone that's very special to me, Lisa Downey, and she's brought a special guest with her. And Lisa, you're from West Georgia Technical College, and you're going to share with us a new program that you're implementing. Yes, I sure am. Uh, I'm the campus director at West Georgia Technical College uh, at the Douglas campus. It's located on 4600 Timber Ridge Drive, right by First Baptist Church. And we just wanted to talk to you about our new program that uh, we're implementing. It will be April 7th. It is Culinary Arts. We're starting out with two certificate programs. And I brought with me our uh, chef instructor, Chef Henry Menard, and he's going to tell you a little bit about the program. Okay. Well, we're glad you're here. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, as Lisa indicated, we're going to start the program in about five or six weeks from now in April. It'll be traditional college students that we start with at nighttime. It'll be four nights a week, Monday through Thursday, from 5 to 10. Uh, and then what we're going to do, uh, starting with the high school students, we're going to do some day classes, uh, two segments or two blocks, I should say, Monday through Friday. And that won't start until after the summer session when the high school students get back. So that way we'll be offering day classes and night classes on a high school level and a college level, and they'll be studying the art and science of uh, gastronomy, which is culinary arts. 
So regardless, if you are an adult and would like to do a career change or know more about culinary or our dual enrolled students beginning in the fall, will be able to take advantage of this. Exactly. Wow, what a great new program to bring to our community. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add? Or if, uh, if I'm interested in uh, taking advantage of this class, but who would I contact? You would need to talk to our student services office. Uh, the number is 770-947-7300. Um, and it's the, the usual process, uh, application process of so filling out an application. Uh, there is a placement test that you do have to take. Uh, but there is financial aid available. So call as soon as possible. Uh, it, it does take a little while for to process the financial aid. So. Um, you know, go ahead and, and, and look into that, especially if you're interested for our spring quarter, which begins April 7th. And how many students will you be accepting into that class? As many as we can handle. <laughs> we will find a space for you. Trust me. Very good. So you heard that. We'll hold them to it. So call Student Affairs and get registered. Well, we're so glad that you would join us today and tell us about the new program that West Georgia is bringing into our community and look forward to tasting some of that delicious food. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Thank you much. And Janice, I'm going to sneak right in here right behind them and we have our final guest with us today, Ms. Jan Booth. Come up and join us. She has some uh, great information and activities for us. She's been here with us before, haven't you? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm the director of the Christian Community Orchestra, and I want to let you know that in Douglas County, there is an orchestra, a real one. Our last concert, we had 71 players, so we're not small. We started almost 18 years ago with five children, and it was a children's orchestra, and they grew up. We became a youth orchestra, and since uh, 1996, we have been the Christian Community Orchestra and growing each year, but we still need you. All right, so if you play an instrument... How, how do they get in touch with you? How can I join your team? We meet every Monday night, uh, year-round, just about every Monday night, year-round, and we meet at Central Baptist Church here in Douglasville, which is at 5811 Central Church Road. And uh, we have three different groups that are meeting. Our main orchestra does meet at 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock on Monday evenings, but at 6 o'clock we have a special time for those who do not feel secure in uh, playing an instrument of their choice or they want to learn another instrument or they used to play and like to get back to it again there's a great opportunity it doesn't matter how young you are how old you are we have them all ages in all of our groups our uh, two groups at six o'clock and our main orchestra uh, that meets at seven uh, age ranges right now are from about 10 years old up through those who are retired yay sounds so. like some fun activity it's just something for everyone then. If you can play an instrument or get reacquainted with an instrument. Then. Yes, ma'am. All right. And uh, we have beginners in our group as well as those who are uh, very accomplished. Uh, we have a lot of talent here in Douglas County. Our, our main concert that's coming up is on May the 4th, and our concerts are always free. Uh, our orchestra is wonderful. We have wonderful comments that people uh, let me know about. We have a website if you're interested in keeping up to date with us. It's at www.christiancommunityorchestra.org. O -R -G. Very good. That was my question. When can we hear you and where? So check out the website. Check the out the Central number. Baptist Church. Central, Central Baptist Church. We appreciate you being with us and press, pressing that information on for us Absolutely. and presenting that for us. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. Janice, if people want to be on our interactive community calendar, how can they do that? You just need to either contact Alice Stevens at the City of Douglasville or either come here to the mall the last Tuesday of each month. You need to be here around 1130 so we can get you registered um, right outside Belks, right here at Arbor Place Mall. Alice is there always helping us each month and doing that. She'll, she'll also do that ahead of time. So, But uh, I think coming up on the community calendar, we've had a great show coming up. We've got more Sunset Love Affair taking us out for the afternoon. We'll be right back with more City Connector. <laughs> My name is Marsha Hampton, Community and Downtown Services Director. My City TV is downtown. Well, I want to thank you.
you for watching City Connector. You can see it on a lot of different places, including Comcast. And that's Digital 22, Tributary 98, and of course, MyCityTV.com. Hey, I got to thank everybody, but make sure that uh, you fill out your census. These guys, Sunset Love Affair, fill out your census. Do it now before we leave. Can we get an explanation as to the name? Yeah. Uh, we just you sat made out it up. And trying to make it up. Yeah. You, you sat yeah. out and sounded, it was, sounded good. Sounds, yeah, sounds right. good. I like it. I think it's great. What's your name? Uh, Chris. Hey, Chris, how you doing? I'm Matt. Matt, nice to meet you guys. Sunset Love Affair. Okay. It's sharing of my heart when I'm with you.